The Hardy Boys, Book One, The Tower Treasure, by Franklin W. Dixon. Chapter 16, A Surprise The rooms in the new tower had been furnished when it was built, but only on rare occasions when the Apple Gates had visitors were the rooms occupied, the owner stated. In the first one, Frank, Joe, and Mr. Applegate found nothing, although they looked carefully in closets, bureaus, high boys, and under the large pieces of furniture. They even turned up mattresses and rugs. When they were satisfied that the loot had not been hidden there, they ascended the stairs to the room above. Again, their investigation proved fruitless. Heard Applegate, being a quick-tempered man, fell back into his old mood. The boy's story had convinced him, but when they had searched the rooms in the tower without success, he showed his disgust. It's a hoax, he snorted. Adelia was right. I've made a fool of, and all because of Robinson. I can't understand it, Joe burst out. Jack Lee said he hid the stuff in the tower. If that fellow did hide the jewels and bonds in one of the towers, Applegate surmised, someone else must have come in and taken them, maybe someone working with him, or else Robinson found the loot right after the robbery and kept it for himself. I'm sure Mr. Robinson wouldn't do that, Joe objected. Then where did he get the nine hundred dollars? Explain that. Robinson won't. On the way back to the main part of the mansion, Heard Applegate elaborated on his theory. The fact that the loot had not been found seemed to convince him all over again that Robinson was involved in some way. Like as not, he was in league with Jackley, the man stated flatly. Again, Frank and Joe protested that the ex-caretaker did not hobnob with criminals. Nevertheless, the Hardys were puzzled, disappointed, and alarmed. Their search had only resulted in implicating Mr. Robinson more deeply in the mystery. Back in the hallway of the main house, they met Adelia Applegate, who crowed triumphantly when she saw the search party returning empty-handed. "'Didn't I tell you?' she cried. "'Heard, Applegate, you've let these boys make a fool of you!' She escorted the Hardys to the front door, while her brother, shaking his head perplexedly, went back to his study. "'We sure mess things up, Frank,' Joe declared, as they walked toward their motorcycles. "'I feel like a dud rocket.' "'Me too.' They hurried home to tell their father the disappointing news. Fenton Hardy was amazed to hear that the stolen valuables had not been located in either tower. You're sure you went over the place thoroughly? Every inch of it. There wasn't a sign of the loot. From the dust in the old tower, I'd say no one had been there for ages, Frank replied. Strange, the detective muttered. I'm sure Jack Lee wasn't lying. He had absolutely nothing to gain by deceiving me. I hid it in the old tower. Well, those were his very words. And what could he mean but the old tower of Tower Mansion? And why should he be so careful to say the old tower? Since he was familiar with Bayport, he probably knew that the mansion had two towers, the old and the new. Of course, it may be that we didn't search thoroughly enough, Joe remarked. The loot could be hidden under the flooring or behind a movable wall panel. We didn't look there. That's the only solution, Mr. Hardy agreed. I'm still not satisfied that the stolen property isn't there. I'm going to ask Applegate to permit another search of both towers. And now I think your mother wants you to do an errand downtown. Frank and Joe were soon on their motorcycles again. When the boys reached the business section of Bayport, they found that Jack Lee's confession had already become known. 
The local radio station had broadcast it in the afternoon's news program, and people everywhere were discussing it. Detective Smuff walked along the street looking as if he would bite the head off the first person who mentioned the case to him. When he saw the Hardy Boys, he glowered. Well, he grunted, I hear you got the stuff back. I wish we had, Frank said glumly. What? the detective cried out, brightening at once. You didn't get it. I thought they said on the radio that this fellow Jackley had told your father where he hid it. He did. But how did the news leak out? Jack Lee's door wasn't closed all the time. One of the other patients who was walking by the room heard the confession and spilled it. So you didn't find the loot after all. Ha! That's a good one. Didn't Jack Lee say the stuff was hidden in the old tower? What more do you need? Well, it wasn't there, Joe retorted hotly. Jack Lee must have made a mistake. Jack Lee made a mistake, Smuff continued cheerfully. Looks like the joke's on you fellas and your father. That would-be sleuth went on down the street, chuckling to himself. When Frank and Joe returned home, they found that Mr. Hardy had been in touch with Herd Applegate and had convinced him to a more detailed search of the towers would be advisable. Boys, he said, we'll go there directly after supper. I think we'd better not wait until tomorrow. At seven o'clock, the detective and his sons presented themselves at the tower mansion. Heard Applegate met them at the door. I'm letting you make this search, he said as he led them toward the old tower. But I'm convinced you won't find anything. I've talked the case over with the chief colleague. He's inclined to think that Robinson is behind it all, and I'm sure he is. But, uh... How about Jack Lee's confession? Mr. Hardy asked him. The chief says that could be a blind. Jack Lee did it to protect Robinson. They were working together. I know it looks bad for Robinson, Mr. Hardy admitted, but I want to give the towers another close examination. I heard Jack Lee made the confession, and I don't believe he was lying. Maybe, maybe, but I'm telling you, it was a hoax. I'll believe that only if I don't find anything inside or outside either tower, Mr. Hardy declared, his mouth set in a grim line. Well, come on, let's get started, Heard Applegate said, unlocking the door leading to the old tower. Eagerly, the four set to work. They started at the top of the old tower and worked downward. Their investigation left no possibility untouched. All the walls were tapped for hollow sounds which might indicate secret hiding places. The floors were examined closely for signs of any recent disturbance to the wood. But the missing jewels and bonds were not located. Finally, the group reached the ground floor again. Nothing to do but go on to the new tower. Mr. Hardy commented briefly. I'll have to rest and eat something before I do any more, Heard Applegate said wearily. He led the way to the dining room where sandwiches and milk had been set out. Help yourselves, he invited. He took only crackers and milk when they all sat down. After the brief stop for refreshment, the Hardys and the mansion owner turned their attention to the new tower. Again they searched carefully. Walls and partitions were tapped and floors were sounded. Every bit of furniture was minutely examined. Not an inch of space escaped the scrutiny of the detective and his helpers. As the search drew to a close and the loot still had not been found, Mr. Hardy remarked, It certainly looks as if the stolen property was never hidden here by Jackley. And furthermore, there's no evidence that, if he did hide it here, anyone came in to take it away. You mean, said Frank, it's proof that Mr. Robinson did not come in here. Exactly. Maybe not, Mr. Applegate conceded. But it still doesn't prove he wasn't in cahoots with the thief. I'm not going to give up this search yet. 
Mr. Hardy said determinately. Perhaps the loot was hidden somewhere outside the old tower. He explained that it would be difficult to examine the grounds properly at night. With your permission, Mr. Applegate, my sons and I will return at sunrise tomorrow morning and start work again. As the owner reluctantly nodded his assent, Mr. Hardy turned to Frank and Joe and smiled. We ought to be able to prove our point before school time. The boys, who had had no time to prepare any homework, reminded their father that a note from him to the principal would be a great help. The detective smiled, and as soon as they reached home, he wrote one out, then said good night. Frank and Joe felt as if their eyes had hardly closed when they opened them again to see their father standing between their beds. Time to get up if you want to be in on the search, he announced. The boys blinked sleepily, then sprang out of bed. Showers awakened them fully, and they dressed quickly. Mrs. Hardy was in the kitchen when they entered it, and breakfast was ready. The sun was just rising over a distant hill. "'Everything hot this morning,' Mrs. Hardy said. "'It's chilly outside.' The menu included hot applesauce, oatmeal, poached eggs on toast, and cocoa. Breakfast was eaten almost in silence to avoid any delay, and within twenty minutes the three hardy sleuths were on their way. "'I see you put spades in the car, Dad,' Frank remarked. "'I take it we're going to do some digging.' "'Yes, if we don't locate the loot hidden above ground some place.' When the Hardys reached Tower Mansion, they instituted their hunt without notifying the Apple Gates, who, they were sure, were still asleep. Everything in the vicinity of both towers was scrutinized. Boulders were overturned, the space under the summer house examined by flashlight, every stone in the masonry tested to see if it could be dislodged. Not a clue turned up. I guess we dig, Frank stated finally. He chose a bed of perennial bushes at the foot of the old tower where there had been some recent planting and pushed one of the spades in deep with his foot. The tool hit an obstruction. Excitedly, Frank shoveled away the dirt around the spot. In half a minute, he gave a cry of delight. A chest! I found a buried chest!